Okay, once again, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. I am terribly, terribly sorry and apologize for this event, lack of uh, knowledge of technology. And, but I promise all of you, we are doing our best, trying to improve every, every time. And what happened was, you know, the Facebook app was open on my computer. So when I'm talking, uh, it was going live out, but then the Facebook was feeding back to me on my screen. So that was a problem. So it's taken care. So I wanted to, first of all, so excited about this and looking, waiting for this for a long time. And uh, so I'm so happy to have Gisele Losan Tsenila here and the member Yang Dui Kazanla and the member Punzo Wang Wamula and uh, also uh, member Kungo Wangdila and all of you. Uh, first of all, welcome. And the number two Sama Taishdile, Tela Taishdile Shuei. And the Tomaya Tsikashiji Pogena Tisi Shugo Samsung. Sorry, I will say a few words in Tibetan to all my uh, Tibetan friends. So Toma Telia Togetola Tsikashiji Shugo Samsung, Karasana. Ting Odep Teton Tina, Naran Gerging Odep Teton Tina, Leata Lokashi Chine, Chik Peju Chene, Titolia, Tis, Mitula, Devachia, the Lobjon Tia, the Anji Chichelang of the Parosuro Chene, Robert of Parosuro, Robert Chia, Tende Peju Chene, Chig Ligmichi Chusu Moire, Naran Gerging Unere, Susu Gergi Pichi Chia, Corine. Alamatunzalam <laughs> Injikela Jabgiore, and it did Jabatama in Bangojo, Yegi, Injiki, Shetawada, the key, the key, Kiri Minda with Chubdin Tola, Tuzik Tola, Kiri Mira Chubdin Tola Jurgiore. Then the Indian Alta, numbers of Talanch and a chick, Injiki and a Pogetola, Jurgin, Talanch and Yana, and a Tesh de Lishugi, and a team maybe in a Negap, and a Mozo Injiki and Alla Shishovaci, and a Tamatella Tango to Jugdum de la. Member Wang Dilagi, Titsa Ji, Monju, Kame, Namatun, the Samaji, Induda, which is so Duru Nangares, or Mondula, the Bugushai. Ah, Chirangi, so so that was it in Tibetan. So I wanted to again welcome everybody. And I'm so excited about, you know, many of our cyber Sangha here being a spiritual practitioner, meditator. Uh, very much uh, conscious of, about well-being, health care, health, and mind. So, so Tibetan medicine is, I think, one of the very important ancient tradition, which, which contains a lot of wisdom about uh, mind and body connection. So it does not see the body and mind as something separate. It sees very much together, uh, and particularly how much our health of body is being influenced by our mind. And so, this is. A, the speakers here are experts in the field, and so I am very, very excited to hear each one of them. So first of all, um, I would like to uh, uh, start with uh, member Wang Dula, and, uh, who is living in New York. Maybe just, uh, uh, maybe if you want to introduce a little bit uh, yourself, your education and where do you where you live, and then I know like a uh, uh, Wangdila is going to talk basically the cause conditions uh, and also about cause conditions of well our well being and also about the imbalance and balances of five elements principles. So so please welcome uh, Wangdila. Oh, yeah, um, hello, everybody. Tashi uh, Dele. My name is uh, Dr. Kunga um, uh, um I was graduate from uh, Tibetan Medical and Astrological Institute, Dramsala. 
and um, then I practiced veterinary medicine almost like 20 years now. And right now I'm living in New York. And, um, and uh, so that's very brief interaction of myself. And uh, so uh, now um, today, the, my topic is about the cause and condition of uh, mental illnesses, or which is uh, related also with the uh, physical illnesses, physical disorders. So, um, so uh, in, uh, and, and according to Tibetan medicine or Tibetan Buddhism, and now uh, we have the mind and the body are not separate. And the mind, uh, mind and the body are separate when, uh, when we die. So when we are alive, we always have relationship between uh, mind and body. So uh, since we are um, talking about the mental uh, issues, mental problems today, so it's, um, it's very important to know that um, what is the cause of the mental issues and uh, what is the conditions of the mental issues that you know, arises from the cause. So uh, I just want to mention briefly uh, uh, in, in, in a short word that um, the, you know, the, the ultimate uh, the mental uh, cause of the mental disorder is from the ignorance, uh, which we always talk about ignorance. And ignorance means that um, the, 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 the lack of the knowledge about the intrinsic, uh, the, 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 the nature of our mind or the things around us. So this is the ignorance. So um, uh, maybe a lot of the people, when you guys go to the uh, Tibetan monastery or Tibetan temple, you guys see those pictures outside of the, uh, the Tibetan temples or the monastery, there's uh, the wheel of life. You can see, I, today I, I have, a, I, I got a picture for that. So I, I just show you a little bit so you can get a little information about this one. You guys see this one, right? The wheel of life, wheel of life. So this one in the center, this one in the center, let, let me try to find this one. This one in the center, there's a pig and there's a, a snake and there's a bird. Uh, so these are uh, called three mental poisons. These are the cause of the mental disorders. And these are comes from the ignorance. So ignorance um, is the root cause for the, all the mental conditions or mental disorders, mental uh, the imbalances. So um, so the, uh, the those three uh, the, the the mental poisons. Why they are called mental poisons? Because these are the uh, the thing that these are the the what they, whatever the the our the afflictive emotions, the negative emotions or negative thoughts that accumulate all the karmas, like negative karmas, uh, which is the cause for uh, the cyclic existence of life. So this is the wheel of life. And so, so these are the uh, cause of all the mental imbalances or mental the illnesses. And then we have ignorance and then three mental poisons and three mental poisons also uh, brings those, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, first of all, I just want to uh, tell a little bit about three mental poisons. The first one is uh, the, the, the uh, hatred, and then we have attachment, and then we have the, the delusions. So the hatred, uh, attachment, delusion, those called three mental poisons. So we have thousands of uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the thoughts and uh, uh, the, we have the, the uh, different kinds of mental, the, the, what they call negative, uh, negative, negative mental states. So if we, uh, the, if we categorize those in, in, in a three, uh, three, three different categories, that, that's called three mental poisons, hatred, desire, and attachment. So uh, those are the things that make us uh, the problems in our, in our mind. Yeah. So, for example, when, when, when someone has a great hatred towards something or someone, and then that's, you know, that's the, that's the course that, that, that makes, uh, you know, like a lot of the mental problems, especially uh, this effect with the, the uh, three principal energies, three principal energies are Lung, Tiba, and Pagan. So the mental... Uh, so this is the course. And then um, after this, then we uh, talk about conditions. I think we, we will go a little bit more detail in, uh, in the next round. So this is, we only have like five or 10 minutes. So that's why. And then we have conditions, conditions that arise those, uh, those problems. You know, there are, since we have 
the cause with us when we are when we are in a, in a and uh, and uh, when we are exist in uh, in the cyclic existence of life, so uh, there are some causes which contribute, you know, which uh, the the, the uh, accumulate and which arise those mental uh, problems and then the manifest as a disease. So that's what we have the uh, time and to the se jualam the time and season and then the negative spirit influence and then diet. And then behavior; those are the causes for the you know, those mental uh, mental the the, the negative uh, influences arise, and it's become a disorder, mental disorder. So so once we have mental disorder, and then we have those all kinds of treatment and uh, the, the, through the uh, the medications and therapy and uh, the psychologists and uh, the religious practice, or which is the mental training. And then we also have those se chu men je, and se be, the, the diet and uh, behavior and medication and therapy. So these are the, you know, the treatment that we Tibetan doctors, we give to the, our men, the mental patients. So I think this is a little bit, um, very, very little information about cause and conditions. So we'll, we'll go more detail. Thank you, Rupsila. Thank you, Dr. Wandula. Thank you very much. Uh, I know uh, this topic is uh, very, very profound, very complex, and it's very, very difficult to no way to cover these issues in a five, 10 minutes. So, I appreciate very much. So, um, so I, what I understand, uh, Dr. Wang Dula, basically core principle is saying that, the, of course, as a human disease is part of our samsaric, samsaric package, when we come, moment we are born on this earth, we have, we come with them, but it does not necessarily mean that we have to use all those problems at the same time. I think Tibetan medical system definitely discuss a lot about uh, prevention methods and uh, with what you eat, your mental attitude, your behavior. And I think these are, I'm sure we're going to talk afterward more. Uh, so basically you can prevent a lot and you can minimize and you can, and also slow down the process of sickness because of these ancient knowledges. So thank you so much. And the second speaker is uh, Dr. Yamdunla. Um, from California. Also, I will ask you to say a few words about uh, yourself and your work. And, uh, and then Dr. Yondula, particularly going to speak, I think it's a very interesting topic is about, we say what we say, Soglung and Nyinglung. So basically, this is also about the wind, uh, the lung, prana, and particularly related to our heart and our, our life force. So which definitely has so much to do with our well-being, if they are balanced, uh, if they are not balanced. It's a little bit like that about uh, breathing. Uh, what I read is that in one, one day, we breathe uh, about uh, 11,000 liters of air in one single day. Every minute, about eight, seven to eight liters of air we breathe in. Of course, not all air is oxygen. So that 550 liters of oxygen that we breathe in. So if you don't breathe, you die in 10, 15 minutes. If you cannot drink water, you can stay uh, weeks. If you don't eat, you can stay even longer than that. So uh, days, sorry, the water in days and they're not eating weeks, you can stay. So but air is really, really important. And then this notion of Solung and Nyinglung are more important because our heart, heart and vitality has been very important. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to Dr. Yandula. Please go ahead. Yes. Good morning, everyone. To... Can you hear me, Rumutila? OK. Good morning. Yes, uh, my name is Yangjung Kyaosang, and I uh, living in San Francisco, came, um, I originally came from Lhasa and educated on Tibetan medicine in Lhasa Medical School, uh, uh, we call University of Tibetan Medicine. 
And I have been living in the West for the last 20 years and also carrying on practicing Tibetan medicine along with my uh, life here. And uh, this is a one of the most interesting topic and subject for me to um, share with everyone because once you're in a life, you really see what people are suffering and you can tell how you can help through Tibetan medicine. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Wundula made a, such a wonderful uh, introduction of cause and uh, conditional cause of uh, mental um, imbalances or mind and body, uh, mind and body imbalances. So a lot of us go through this um, without knowing, or some of them you have a tiny bit of problem, your doctor, either doctor or yourself diagnose yourself, I'm being diagnosed with the depression, anxiety, panic, et cetera. So I like to use this opportunity for you and for me to share this common point where you can find yourself, when to bring yourself uh, to see this point of moment that when do you have the imbalances of mind and body? Because at this stage, even if you go to your doctor, uh, Western doctor, allopathic doctor, you do your MRI, you do your X-ray, you do your blood test, no matter how, how fancy the test will be, it will not be really showed in the test result. But as a patient or well, the person will go through different discomfort. So I want to start with the, um, I kind of categorize them into mental feeling and, or emotional feeling and also as well as the physical feeling. So in general, uh, when you look at the person, uh, the person tends to be liking to eat uh, uh, what we call as a junk food, they don't like to really nourish. I wanna be really um, low fat diet. I wanna keep myself skinny. I wanna keep myself good shape, which is nice. But a lot of time those people develop uh, some type of uh, lung conditions and their body tends to be uh, cold easily, uh, susceptible for cold or breeze. And for us, most people live in the West, we have air conditioning inside the building all the time. So that account as a one of the, um, one of the source of breeze or the cold wind expression because that can produce a lot of pain uh, as well as the emotional uh, imbalances. And then a lot of people tell me that they feel cold on their hands, on their feet. And when you look at their finger, it's um, bluish color and really pale. When you look, it can be either pale or dark bluish color. So people live in the colder weather, you will experience that as well. And one of the most interesting part of the person will be very talkative and they can be talking to themselves, they can be talking something that not makes, so, uh, makes a sense, but it also does not need to be making sense. So they will go over something, they will tell everything about it from top to bottom, and they may not be connected, but they like to talk. So they will talk, talk, talk. And you, when you see in the clinic, you can see what kind of person is this, what kind of people, some people with different constitution, they do not really talk that much. And uh, I just wanna go back to Dr. Undus. He used the terminology of lung tiba pegan. So the lung is the one actually based on our five elements in Tibetan medicine, it's air, or the wind related. So that's the one majorly affect in our mental and body imbalances. And another thing is that the per person can become really sensitive, sensitive to noise, to, uh, to lights, to everything. They cannot really sleep well, fall asleep. They wake up easily and they cannot fall asleep. They're thinking so much. Another word uh, we would normally uh, describe is a monkey mind. So they get a many thoughts, but cannot really follow through. And um, this is a one thing. And uh, another thing is they kind of really like to sing uh, our song, which is great. 
and they like to laugh without much reasons. And also they like to argue, they like to fight. We in Tibetan uh, medicine, we actually say uh, to fight with something, but like making more argument, being really critical, something is too, even if someone did something good for you, it either is too long, too short, too hot, too cold. Anyway, they will find a reason to complain. So make other people uncomfortable. And uh, those are the signs and symptoms. And also what they have is a, uh, Lot, they get a lot of good ideas, but they cannot really follow through. So those are the mental uh, connection that what you can catch yourself where you are. And the person prefers to eat sweet, sour, and spicy or pungent food or flavored um, snack. And in terms of the physical body, they probably feel shaking easily and trembling. So at this moment, we're not really diagnosing any serious condition, but this is the early stage. And shivering is a one common thing that they do, do have, and nice sweat and hot flashes. So all those symptoms that really connect with the lung. And also lung physically, in terms of their sum of the pain, it's not stable, it's not localized, it moves around. So sometimes, for instance, you have a headache. The headache is on the top of your head one moment, the other moment is on the temporal area, the other moment is on your occipital region, it moves around, so it's not uh, stable. So I think probably this much, uh, I used up my minutes. Um, I hope that uh, covered enough information. Oh, Dariandela, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, so I think uh, it's a very, very interesting all aspect of the Tibetan medicine that how, you know, it, it has so much to do with the cause, conditions. There is no such, nothing is fixed here and everything is possible to change, possible to prevent possible to be and be aware. So I think these are the uh, more and more we learn about our body, uh, conditions of our body, and uh, it might be very different from another person so that more like able to work with your own need specifically, rather than very general advices. This is one thing during the conference in, uh, in Virginia, Serenity Rich, Dr. Yandela was talking and I thought it was very interesting is just generally in the West that um, we, there's always a very advices that is given to everybody. For example, some people believe in a low fat, so avoid fat. Uh, and, uh, and some people are low curb and avoid all. So even the egg yolks, you know, like uh, it's not um, good for everybody. Now science finding is that no, even though York has uh, cholesterol within them, but not necessarily corresponds to affecting cholesterol in the heart, you can eat eat now. So many years of not, not eating, now certainly you can eat, but then it's also for everybody. So I don't think that Tibetan medicine is really uh, talks like that. It, that does, it really makes you understand that you each individuals are very differently designed either your gene or your upbringing, the conditions that you have met, and uh, the nu nu nutrition that you got or you did not got. So every current body is a very unique body. You really have to understand that alone itself and to figure it out. So this is, I think is a very interesting. I hope that uh, all of you can cover more of that. Um, so now, um, Next speaker is here, Dr. Punzola. Uh, let me unmute you first. Are you, what happened? No, I'm not saying it again. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, so. Check it. Uh, please uh, say a little bit about yourself and also the Shang Jung 
uh, Institute, the way you are working. And I just wanted to let everybody know, all the speakers know that uh, our great host, Anya, have all the informations of each one of your particular work. And as you have been talking, Anna is posting all <clears> the <throat> website and your information there. And also, all those, all those you're listening to here, please remember that if you have anything interest, seems interesting by any speakers, you can always go back. Anya has posted a link and website to get more information, their publication, their, their, where they can meet, how you can contact them, and so on. Thank you so much. Pazola, go ahead. Nasu Kadinchi. Thank you, Rinpoche, and everybody. <laughs> Sorry, today I'm in the outdoor. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> suddenly our internet cut it, so I cannot use the computer. But it's nice outside, it's nice weather, so also somehow it's lucky. So, <clears throat> okay, so the thank you, the two previous speakers, and then also Rinpoche. Um, yeah, the two previous speakers explained uh, in general conditions about the, uh, the disease. So, <clears throat> But the, the Tibetan medicine is uh, when we're looking the cause of the disease, as Dr. Kunga uh, Wondula, he said. Uh, when we're looking the cause of the disease, <clears throat> uh, can be caused is through the diet behave. And not only through the diet behave, many of us we thinking the cause of disease must be either wrong food or the wrong behave. But also there's another one important or the like a critical cause of the disease is also uh, the seasonal and also environment. So the each season we changing, there is a meaning because is the season changing, the temperature is changing, element is changing. So same as like that, we also in our body, uh, our body mechanism also changing. So when we're looking, uh, <clears throat> previous speakers, so when we're looking this, the lung element, which is air element or the wind element. So the air element or the wind element is one of the five elements. It's very important in our body normally is like air element is that the what we come through the, our breathing and the function is all the movements actions mental activities thinking thoughts and also circulating the all the liquids uh, included the blood but that the air element <clears throat> if the air element is balanced time or the five element balancing time, and then they working as a team to maintain the healthy body and the healthy mind. Same as like the outer nature, all the five element outer nature is balanced. We will have a good summer, good autumn, good crops, good flowers, so on and so forth. If that's not balance time, then we'll have which we call is a natural disaster. Same as like that way, our inner, our body, five element imbalance time, also that can causing us losing our life or uh, the major problem is losing life and the minor problem is making suffering through the physical body and the mind. <clears throat> as Rinpoche said, is this the breathing is important. How important is the breathing? Every second they breathing certain numbers of the breath and some of them is oxygen. Some of them is not necessarily oxygen, but is body needed. So when we look in this, uh, how important the air element, but the more important is the balance of the air element. If the air element is excess, as the Dr. Yang Junla mentioned before, we will have all type of symptoms of the mental issues, <clears throat> like uh, anxieties, uh, panic, not able to sleep, 
and then stress, so on and so forth. But also there is a problems, ear element deficiency. So if the excess is there is a problem, deficiency also there is a problem. So when we comes into the, this is not only in the air element, all five elements, if the imbalance, so then we will have the problems. So the my today's main topic is that the winter, how should care of the winter? Why is the winter? <clears throat> the winter is the, uh, in the weather comes to cold, and then night is longer, day is shorter, and also more so like a cohesive, condensed, like everything come to the peace, cold, calm. Included also birds is not moving. All the underground animal is go back to the underground. And then the flying animals like birds, they go to the other warm nature place which means is the when the weather is cold as there is not life so for that reason what happened in our body is in our body is we the the body is sort of like a like automatic it's very smart body system so what they do is they shut down the, the all the pores try to keep the heat inside same as like what we do maybe so many of the listeners audience are living into like a uh, warm climate in the winter so maybe for them is it does not make <laughs> maybe so sense but we like who live in the tibet or in the north america or many other regions like winter for us we need to heat turn on the heat close the windows once we turn on the heat if we open the windows, all the heat goes out. For that reason, important to close the window, not only in close the window, but also many countries, we have like the double windows. So which means is that the important to keep the heat inside to protect the people in the building, prevent from the frozen, prevent from the like um, un unable to move. Same as like that way in the winter comes, the body pours, they shut down to keep the heat inside to protect the organs. So this one is also one usage of the preventing the disease. And the also the another one is to uh, like, we can say sort of like to cure the disease. So when we, when is the winter? So winter is in the Tibetan month, in the lunar calendar. It's 9th, 10th, and 12th. Uh, so, so the, the 9, 10, 11 is the winter for like three months of the winter. But in the Tibetan medicine, what we did is that the, in our seasons, so we, our season in generally, there are four seasons and the two like transition seasons. So we have two sources, two equinoids. The summer solstice is the middle of the summer. The winter solstice is the middle of the winter. And then the spring solstice, I mean, the equinoid is the spring. And then autumn equinoid is the, the middle of the autumn. So then two transition. So for that reason, we in the Tibetan medicine, we have six seasons because two transitions. So when we look in the winter, we have early winter and the later winter. So the early winter starting in the Tibetan lunar calendar in the ninth and then the 10th month. And then the later winter is the 11th and the 12th month. So the first day of the Tibetan New Year, which we call as Losar, and that is the first day of the spring in Tibetan lunar calendar. So that pretty much related to we, the, when we translate into like a Western, I mean, the, uh, today's our international, like the calendar, November, December is like early winter, and the January and the February is later, uh, later winters. 
So then sometimes as a lunar calendar, we have little shift days, but it's basically that's the one. So those two different parts of the winter, what are happening? The first month of the winter, like the ninth or the November, as all the elements going down to the ground. Even as like the Tibetan medicine, like the herbology. So at that time, no one harvesting the plants because all the energy is going down to the ground. So it, at that time, all the root medicine is more powerful. Same as like that, we also, we as a human or the, any other animals, also we tend to see gain weight. Also, this is also cycle of the sun and the moon. The moon energy is more powerful than the sunlight because sunlight is shorter, moonlight is longer, and so on and so forth. So when that happened, so when that happened time, and then it's the two important things. One is the to understanding the season of the winter and to find out is the, what is the, uh, the, the diet. So, so this is that the, the so that is that the important so okay so first round i will stop here and then i will continue with uh, more explain to the nature of the food and so on and so forth thank you well, <clears throat> thank you dr punzola uh, let me unmute and unmute okay so thank you so much. So I will um, now our next speaker. We have uh, Lobzan La, and uh, Lobzan La is going to have been doing a lot of work in teaching meditation in prison. And so uh, basically, Lobzan La is going to speak about the how does the mindfulness healing works, and somehow you know all the the defects in our body, the issues in our body, in mind, uh, has some so much to do with our uh, ability to control our mind or not able to stay calm and cool and playful or not. So I think uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Please go ahead and um, say a few words about you yourself. And then of course, uh, Anya will be posting all the information about you. So thank you. Please go ahead. Kogumindo, check unmute check over yesterday. Love Zanla, Kogumindo. Who there? Hello? Hello? Uh, volume to change you. Oh, yeah, that, that could do. Volume to chair down now. Volume to chair down. Yeah, what's that called? Any volume the chair tongue? Yana the caution at the hero. Hello, everybody. Tabu with a Hanukoda. Okay, let's. Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you, Rimbuche and Anya. Um, so if uh, organizing such a great, wonderful event, and thank you very much for my um, uh, friends in here. Uh, participating with me here now. And so I would like to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, connection between uh, mind and body, which uh, at the beginning, uh, Dr. Wong Dula already mentioned about it in the opening, opening talk. And so here, so when we talk about mind and body relationships, so which Wong Dula already mentioned, three, uh, three Nyepas or uh, Lung Tipa Pekin, and so if you understand 
all these three and how to cooperate with your mindfulness practice, that would be great, um, you create your um, the, the, the preventive care. So, so that's why I would like to a little bit um, elaborate on that, how to use mindfulness for your um, um, for your for your preventive care. So as the Dr. Wondula mentioned about antibiotic medicine, um, so Sejo Menje, so there is a, a diet and behavior and then medicine therapy and so on. So at the first two, uh, diet and the behavior is a very uh, important uh, for your uh, for your to prevent your uh, further uh, developing more serious sickness. Uh, for example, when you're eating, if you eat if you eat by mindfully, so that means uh, you can eat more slowly and be more mindfully, and so that helps. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, my dog is putting my. <laughs> oh God. Um. So when you eat, you should eat mindfully, like you know, chew well, bite enough. Don't just like you know, shove on your mouth and swallow in and then just go to work right away. So even though you, you eat like you know, uh, 10, 10 bites only, if you, if you take this bite very mindfully and chew well, so that when you're chewing, so it produces more enzyme. So when you enzyme, more enzyme you have, it goes to your body and your stomach and digest properly. So antibiotic medicine says, uh, means all the undigest, all the sickness, internal sickness you have is come from the undigest. So if you don't chew properly and then more your stomach and your all the digestive system have more trouble to work harder to digest all the uh, your food that you have eaten. And so that's why it is very, very important to uh, having your uh, eat be mindfully. And then second one is behavior. So behavior is the have body behavior and mental behavior. So we're here I'm talking about a little bit about the um, mental behavior. So mental behavior, when you talk, talk mindfully. If you walk, walk mindfully, right? If you don't talk mindfully, you use such a harsh words and then it creates more trouble for the other people and as well as yourself, get more stress. So then there all the stress that release a lot of hormones, stress hormones, so on. So that stress, stress hormones, so on, they accumulate in your body every single time and it gradually it develops like, you know, huge problems. So it's like a drop of the water can make a hole on the stone, right, on the rock. So same thing, like, you know, have you feel like I'm, I'm a little bit stressed today, but it's adding up and releasing all those hormones in your body that continues in your body accumulated and then creates such a big problem. So the, um, so here, so what I'm saying is be mindful, eat mindful, talk mindful, everything be mindful, and then there's, there will be the best diet you have. So balancing diet is the best diet you have. Thank you. Lastu che So you, you hear me okay? Okay. So so thank you so much so much it was fantastic and very very uh, interesting and I think uh, all all conversation you hear um our first speaker to the second and the third and fourth all are basically connected to to each other. So maybe the second round of conversation, uh, I would uh, request all of you maybe uh, maybe the same sequence, uh, Dr. Wambula maybe same sequence with uh, talking a little bit about more what we can do today. <laughs> so. Maybe less less theoretical part. So what we can actually, I can start right now in terms of the um, balancing my the winds and elements, five elements, and uh, as again the same about okay winter care. What should I drink and not drink and eat and not eat and so on. So I think maybe some uh, practical advices that I think probably we all are looking forward. And um, well, some of you we were living in California, the weather is a little bit better, <laughs> but somewhere in, in Northern Europe, maybe they definitely wanted to hear a little bit more about how to uh, cope with the winter, winter here. So, so let's uh, kind of start with that. So Dr. Wandula, you want to go?
Oh yes, uh, thank you for everyone. Um, everybody, uh, that gives very good uh, talks on the on the topic. It's it's very interesting, and I can also learn a lot from uh, those topics. So thank you so much. Now this is um, uh, the thing is that how Tibetan medicine can help the mental problems. So in order to know that, we first thing the the one of the most important thing is that we have to know there is a very close connection between mind and body. So this is very important. Anything we do for the, the, the mental health or the physical health. So first thing we have to know how those two things are connected, how the, those two things can influence each other, how those two things can help each other, improve each other's, uh, the, the, what they call that, um, the health. So this is uh, one of the key thing, you know, if you, uh, if, if, if you wanna learn about uh, the mental problem and the physical problems and the, its connections. And so I would like to say a little bit about, uh, you know, the connections between mind and body and where it comes from. And so it is um, the, 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 how mind and the bodies comes together. It starts with, we all are, uh, our, our life is starting with the conceptions in the mother's wombs. So uh, we say that uh, and then uh, uh, the, uh, what it says that pai ku e rubel da pangbu pame ku jai kyo me ben namshi le dan yomu ki gu ni junga cho bing e tu chak bai kyu. This is what is what is this saying is that we need to have a union of father's sperm, a healthy sperm, and then and and, and also the the hormones from mother. And on top of that, we need to have a consciousness of a being which has the past karmic influence. And then we also have those, you know, like uh, the, the the equal qualities of the five elements. So those are the the. Uh, the cause of the conceptions. When we have those three things, three components in a, in a, in, a, in the same place in together, and then we have a fetus. Then we have a baby in a, in a womb. So this is the cause. So if you think very carefully, carefully at the carefully, that's uh, you know like uh, uh, the, the mind and the body and the elements comes together in a one place. That's the starting point. That's the life started. So uh, when we start our life. Those three things need to become put together. Otherwise, there will be no fetus. There will be no baby. So, uh, so, so this is the one of the 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 the, the, the starting point. So, so the question here is, so how do we actually do it? All right. How, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the how, uh, the, how actually yeah. uh, today? You know, um, this morning when we started to have the the online thing, the internet went wrong and everything <laughs> went wrong. So, so how do we actually do that? I mean, in, in tips that maybe can be beneficial and helpful. Oh, I mean, yes. Yeah, conceptually, I think people, some, some sense we understand, okay, how that it works, but in, in a real life, real situation, uh, how, does, how does that, what, what should people do? Oh yes, so to 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 get a pregnancy, we should have a very healthy uh, sperm from uh, the father and uh, very healthy from a mother. So this is uh, something. If you have any problems with the lung, especially the wind disorders, we should treat it. Otherwise, the wind disorders. There are many cases that you know some some of some of the some of the some of the the. The, the 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 father or the mother they, they don't have enough quantities of the uh, the sperm and, the, and you know the not healthy eggs so that also this also can cause the problems for the conceptions pro problems to get the pregnancy so there uh, I have a lot of lot of uh, the the patients they have the problem with the uh, getting baby and then they come to us and then we check the purse they have a huge accumulation of wind with them and then they have the wind energy imbalance so we should treat that and we should keep like we should have the good uh, source of nutrition and food and we should have a very healthy mind we should have a very the peaceful mind and all those things are very necessary very important to get a pregnancy to get at the conceptions. So this is one practical thing step. And then, then, or then, yeah. So, so after that, then we have, uh, then we have those uh, three connections together. So here, why I'm mentioning those three things, because those three things, 
the, the father's sperm and the mother's egg. They are in the nature of five elements. And then there's a conception, there's a, the consciousness of a being. This also says there is a very subtle, uh, the various, the, the subtle natures of the five elements present there. And then we also have uh, the, what they call the, the uh, uh, Pama and then the, the mm -hmm. consciousness. So this need to be present there and five elements equally. Otherwise, if there's an imbalance, if there's an excess, if there's a, the, 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 the deficiency, and then we're not going to become the... the, yeah. the so, uh, for, for example, yeah, in terms of the conceptions, I understand that you need a father, you need, you need a mother, then also the blood and the sperm, and then also the consciousness. But what about the same principle of uh, balances of body and mind, balances of five element, the current moment, like right now, as we are speaking right now, if I look at myself, so mm -hmm. I have a body and mm -hmm. uh, I have a mind mm -hmm. and uh, is the my mind aspect of five element in, 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 in my mind, then aspect of element in my body, are they together or not? Is my awareness is participating as a conception? Is awareness is participating or not? If if awareness is a participating, then if any action that I wanted to give a birth, like an action of joy, or action of love, or action of some creative thing, but the action only going to come if my awareness participating in my body and the plan of my mind. Right? The principle will apply similar. So maybe. Yes. Something like that, maybe uh, people might uh, helpful. Yes, uh, Yes, uh, That's uh, that's uh, that, uh, that's exactly uh, uh, the uh, yeah uh, the, 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 the the people have to know that because the mind and body and elements, the, the five elements. You know, the Les Rubici said that we are here today, right now. I'm moving my hands and I'm I'm, I'm talking. So all those activities, all those movements, comes from those energies, those five elements. When we talk about five elements in terms of medical level or in terms of a clinical level, in terms of treatment, we call them three principal energies, which we call lung. Chiba and Pagan. So Lung means the, the, the equal uh, the meaning of uh, wind energy. And then Chiba is the energy of fire, fire element. So this is, and then Pagan is earth and water. Pagan, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's very old, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the language that we've used in Tibet on, on like thousand years before, again. And then we have a space element present in, with all of those five elements. So whatever we do, everyday life, in the morning, morning to evening time, we go to the office, we go to the, uh, to go to the, uh, the, the street, we go to the restaurant, eat, whatever we do, what our body activities, whatever we're moving. And those are because of the contribution of those five elements or the five, three principal energies. And then mind also has those five elements and with uh, the, the, the three principal energies. Those are the like bridge, which bring those mind and body together because they share the nature. The mind also has the, the, the qualities or the quantities of the, the equal quantities of the five elements, body also. So, so they, 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 they share the nature. So that's why mm -hmm. the five elements and three principal energy are the bridge between okay. mind and body. So that's the connections. Okay, so thank you, yeah. Lose, yeah, yes, Rinpoche. When we lose that connections, when we lose that connections, then we have all kinds of problems. And whether you are thinking something, you are doing something. You know, you think to go there, and you think to catch up a pen, and but you cannot catch because it is dropped because there is no connection. We lose the connection. Okay. Yes, Rumbuchi, you are asking something. Th yeah, thank you. No, thank you. So I think maybe we will um, just. Uh, I will. Time is short, so we'll maybe move on um, with the uh, Dr. Punzola. Please just go ahead. Okay. Describe. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? I lost you. I can't hear you. Uh, oh, that could do. 
Ale jakie to masz jeru, a ty ma gore. Tą boczałem, bry. Tą boczałem. Lasa, ne? Są na... Okay, so um, once again, thank you for uh, watching and uh, staying with us. And um, Dr. Kungala made us such a wonderful connection of the mind and body, how they're reciprocally related. So this is a very fundamental theory you need to know. And then once you know what we need to do is uh, how to cope with these conditions, right? The symptoms that we mentioned, some of the basic signs that you can recognize yourself, we have talked about. And even Dr. Wondula mentioned, we need to treat it, right? Once you, know, once you have it. So through the Tibetan medicine, in terms of treatment, we just don't go forward as a, um, uh, what do we call it, the um, medication right away. So there's the levels of different categories. You apply for diet, diet and nutrition, lifestyle and behavior, and herbal remedies. Then you go to the external therapies. But when you are having this type of little things, you do, may not ne necessarily need everything. So maybe later on when we have a minute that Dr. Ondula can talk a little bit about food, what you can eat for the lung. But on the other hand, what I am going to focus on is external therapy. We call HORME, spells as H-O-R slash M-E-Y. And this is a warming or hot therapy and uh, we use oil. So med medically we use, and we can also use as a self-care. So I brought a little demo and a few things together. You can get this thing very easy. Can you see this? Not really well, right? Um, but it's a nutmeg. So let me put it on little white paper. Maybe you will see a little better. Oh, I, I just give the name, so it's harder to see. It's a nutmeg shell with a whole mm. nutmeg. And then you can get some caraway seeds. So when you have this tool, because this is a really warming herbs and also nourishing uh, for the lung, for the, in terms of lung, we need a, something to bring the lung down because it's an access case at this moment we're dealing with. So we need some nourishing means nutritional, warm, uh, it need to have the warm property. So particularly we use a uh, nutmeg and our uh, caraway seeds are the two main thing. Then other thing what we need is that uh, we can either use a ghee, ghee as a clarified butter or sesame oil. So you really need these two things or three things together for yourself. For emergency use, what you can do is uh, in case you get a all of a sudden you fight with your boss or you have some big argument, you cannot breathe, you got a little panic attack, you know, you're locked in the room, something. What you can do is you take a deep breath, but if you have a, some handy of nutmeg and um, can we see it's powder, you smell it. You just ingest the uh, through your nose just to smell and inhale the smell, that will help you to relieve the uh, emergency or the urgent care. Uh, it will um, get rid of the condition at that moment. But when you have a little better condition at home, what you can do is uh, you heat them up. You can use uh, something called um, um, cup warmer. So it's uh, something like this. You put a candle in, then you put the herbal poultice in. So what you do is that uh, you just grind a Grind both of the herbs that we mentioned. You make a poultice, like a, something like this. So it's just the powder of the herbs that you uh, we talked about. You mix them together. Then you put inside this. You put a little bit oil, heat it up. So once you heat up, you're gonna apply for a few points. There are few points are very easy. You can you can do it right away. Those points are palms. You have two palms, most of them. Uh, most of us, then you use the palms and you use the sole, two points, four points right there. Then on the crown of the uh, head, uh, where's your crown of the chakra, you can put that and a little bit in the front, uh, front, front nail. 
So it's about four finger breath forward, then another eight, <coughs> eight finger breath back. Then you can use on your temporal. It really helps you to relieve a lot of tension and uh, anxiety. And another thing is uh, you can put, <coughs> sorry, you can put it right between the sternum um, on the sternum bone, right between the breast area, you kind of palpate along with it where you feel the most tendon or uh, tenderness or tightness or soreness area, you can use that point. So that's a one option you can do. Another option is uh, for a lot of kids, they don't like the heat or they don't like this. You can just make a little um, small pouch um, with these two herbs put under the pillow uh, when, they, when they feel um, cannot fall asleep or difficult falling asleep, uh, when they feel really anxiety. Adults can do that too. Uh, you just inhale the smell. That one has been really useful. So I just gonna mention this really simple method that you can apply um, because it's a cost effective it's a really, um, really easy to make yourself. A lot of time we do not need an anti, uh, uh, antidepressant to get rid of those conditions that we talked about above uh, because those signs, symptoms, of course, are the early stage of depression, what they say, but there are many ways we can use an integrative way or holistic point of view to make this, uh, to help yourself and you can help your family. Is it okay, Ramatila? Yeah, yeah. Um, one second. Kudwala. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Last. I think it's a really, really helpful, um, very practical. I think uh, I'm sure many of you hear it very clearly, and uh, I hope that you are able to use some of these great advices. And uh, so, uh, uh, once again, you know, like on the Facebook live, there is, uh, you know, the comments where people can make comments. And I think if, they, if you have a specific comments or questions uh, wanted to ask to a specific speaker, please go ahead and just try to ask that. But there, there's no promises that you're going to get the answer. But if maybe if they, they have to have time, they might look at it and they might think it's important to uh, answer. Then on the comment, maybe I will ask all of you to, if you can answer some of the questions to our cyber listeners. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Punsola, please. <clears throat> Okay, Lasso Rambuji, good in chair. Okay, so um, as continue, thank you very much, previous speakers. Yeah, they did it, such a wonderful. So when we get into the winter, as we said, the day is a long uh, shorter, night is longer, and then all the heat is uh, like uh, intense into the internal. So which means is our uh, body metabolism is also a little higher at the time. Uh, so that means is that whatever we eat, that just is faster than the uh, other seasons. So for this reason, reason of that, and then we say is the important to eat in generally three uh, tastes. So in general, we have six tastes of food, like sweet, sour, salty, uh, bitter, hot, and astringent. But in the winter cases, the first three tastes, which is a sweet, sour, and a salty, are more important. Why is important? Because it's this that the, uh, each taste has predominated by two elements. When we're looking like sweet taste is more predominated by the uh, earth and the water element. And then the sour taste is the fire and the earth element. And the salty is water and the fire element. So for that reason, as they say, is better winter to eat these three uh, main, these three uh, tastes. That does not mean is we should eat all in these three tastes is not talking because is whole purpose is a balance so not to making is one is more or less. So, when we're looking, the, the, what are they, the sweet taste? 
the, so there's a lot of food contains the sweet taste. In general, any other any food has some partials of the sweet taste, but there's a more dominated sweet taste is like uh, um, all the meat product is a sweet taste, all the dairy product is a sweet taste, which is before adding the fermenting, like a cheese yogurt is a different taste, but is uh, like origin like a milk. And then also like the grains, like barley, wheat, rice, it's also included like oat, it's a sweet taste. So in the winter time, also in the fruit, when we're looking fruit, like a banana is a sweet taste, uh, grape also like a sweet taste. So when we look in those sweet tastes, also is a, uh, the sweet taste has the predominated by the earth and the water element, which means it's more heavy. So they help to grounding. And then the second one is a, the sour taste. Sour taste is all the fermented food is sour taste. And then also like a origin, so like the pomegranate fruit is a sour taste. And there's some partial sweet, I mean the apple also like the sour taste. And then the salty is like in general salt is a salty taste. So when, why we need to eat these three tastes in the winter? Because it's these three tastes has more capacity to build the body. Because winter is like the, all the heat is inside. Digesting is very fast. So that means is once the food quality or the quantity is not strong or not enough, they can sort of like the uh, consumed the the and like constituents of the person. So that means is also they can losing like when we're looking like saving money, they can lose instead of making out of it as you can lose that the saved one. So for that reason to protect the saved part like the body constituents and then to prevent them from the indigestion problems. So this kind of reason is important to eat this three type of the food. And then also is the not only eating this kind of food, but also the another one is a proportion levels. So in general, we say is that the important to have the, uh, the good breakfast and a good lunch because is it the, the lunch and the breakfast to make it the whole day to move and the light dinner. But in the winter comes is that the dinner also is important to have a good dinner because to making the, the, the long night. Otherwise, if the food is digested half of the night and the rest of the night is the stomach is empty, when the empty time, what happened is increased the lung. And then that increase of the lung plus this that the heat can like consume faster the body constituents. This is one. The another one, if the person is in generally weaker digestive system, that the increase the lung or the wind element or the air element in the night, and that, that can cause to decline the digestive heat and then permanent. Why? Because is that the when we're talking this the air element, air element has the six characteristics. The one of the characteristics of the the uh, the air element or the lung element is like the rough, and then is cold, light. So, and then also subtle, hard, and the mobile. So these six, six characteristics of the air element, the one of them is like rough and the cold and the mobile. So the cold, increase the cold can cause and extinguish that the heat and then that can cause to the indigestion. As the previous Yeshi um, Lopsala said is the, the root of the internal disease is indigestion or the indigestion is root of the internal disease. 
So if we have, if we cause or the, the problem of the indigestion, then they can cause all the internal disease included like diabetes, arthritis, uh, blood pressures and the liver problem, gallbladder problems so on and so forth. So this is the, the, the second part. And then the next part I will cover to make a short sort of like in summarize. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fonsola. I think uh, all of your advices are very, very uh, practical, something that I think everybody can feel like they can change something, do something, prepare themselves. So very, very useful information. Thank you very much. And actually, I'm very excited about it's amazing to sitting all expert people and sitting all in different part of the country and just feels like a very comfortable sitting here listening to all of you and learning. This is fantastic. So, so I will not take time. So uh, uh, please, uh, uh, you wanted to go ahead. Sure. Hello, uh, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good, okay. Oh, uh, well, so I forgot to introduce myself earlier. Uh, so my name is Lobsang and I was a uh, Tibetan Buddhist monk for over 20 years. And, and currently I'm uh, learning uh, Chinese, uh, acupuncture Chinese medicine. And I study uh, Tibetan medicine with the international, uh, sorry, uh, Sodikang International. And so here, um, my friends uh, earlier mentioned about the how to take care of yourself. Um, so I, so my part of the uh, topic, so now is I want to continue from my previous uh, um, topic and also which is connecting to the, my last uh, friend's, uh, Dr. Pinzola's uh, topic. So, and so probably now you must uh, familiar with the, all these three Nyepas or three different uh, um, uh, personalities like lung disorder, tibia disorder, begging disorder. These are the principal uh, three uh, different personalities that we have. And so here today, I want to focus more on um, lung disorder. So which is uh, Dr. Yandrola mentioned about it, the quality of the uh, uh, characteristic of the lung disorder, which is like very fidgety and talk active and very fickle mind and sensitive and so on. So most likely like you know, in Western, uh, Western medicine, they call like OCD kind of um, disease or the people behavior, like, you know. And so therefore that case, um, so if you apply the meditation and mindfulness on that one, so single point of meditation would be very, very great helpful. And through my own experience, my personal experience, and also I uh, had encounter with the many uh, stressful, um, depressive uh, people in the prison and I just give this such a simple suggestion they don't have any other uh, um, facilities so they really uh, apply that one their own daily practice and really help so which is the single uh, point in, single point in meditation uh, in Tibetan so because uh, how it helps is you know the wind disorder which is uh, very very um, sensitive and very fickle like always moving and very fidgety and mind is always like constantly thinking. So because these are the all like very light kind of like moving kind of characteristic. So a single point of meditation is kind of like more, more like, you know, um, uh, you're, you're just uh, kneeling, kneeling down, kneeling down on the ground. So that's why when you meditate like single point of meditation. So for example, when you have very, very, uh, that particular um, stressful situation, like keep constantly, you know, thinking crazy things in your mind and cannot settle down yourself. So uh, try to, uh, you don't need to have like, you know, very quiet and very peaceful uh, place. So this we always looking for, like, you know, I would like to meditate, but I cannot find a nice, a peaceful, a quiet place. That if you find that particular um, facility you're looking for, you never, never uh, find such a facility. So you just see so wherever you are, just, just sit there quietly and then visualize the, uh, try to visualize on your breathing, breathing in and out. So as Rinpoche said earlier, 
So uh, the air that we're breathing in and out, so we're just taking as a as a granted. Actually, it's not that such a um, it's very very uh, important for us. Like you know, when to inhale and exhale. So that is the such, such a simple thing. And once you inhale, you cannot exhale. That means you are gone, right? So inhale, exhale very mindfully, and then uh, try to visualize a um, very heavy heavy uh, objects. And so if you are not the uh, spiritual practitioner. So there's no need to have a, such a uh, like a um, special or religious figure on it. So uh, usually I just uh, such a, um, I just give an idea of in the prison, which they don't have any belief system is uh, like, you know, the anchor, the which ship holds. So that is kind of like heavy quality. So if you can visualize such like heavy quality uh, objects that helps you to anchor down to your to your your uh, your fickle and your fidgety mind so that is very very important and also uh, uh, some my some of my precious uh, my master's uh, idea was if you can visualize a gold color even a gold gold the, the material the gold is even better because gold is natural the gold is very heavy so that helps you to hold you down and then also that helps you to fall asleep as well. So lung disorder, usually they're having a lot of insomnia problem. So insomnia problem. So insomnia problem is when you uh, lay down in your bed and you cannot fall asleep. Just, just try to meditate that one. And also sometimes you can, sometimes if it's a very noisy area and just focus on the sound, whatever you can hear. And in, in the prison, there was uh, like a 60, 70 uh, adult inmates in a one big dome and they all they, their major complaint was I cannot fall asleep because my my dorm mates are very noisy. So I said okay just just be there and don't be any judgmental mind. Just don't listen as like a noise like a bad and good thing. Just listen as a sound. And if you can just not just ignoring it, just try to focus on it and just listen without any judgmental mind. So that kind of like you know attitude can help you to settle your mind down and calm your mind down and it gradually helps you to fall asleep. So that is very beneficial and really for my own, uh, my, many of my um, uh, the people in India, they really uh, give me the credit. That's really helping for them in their, their really such a uh, critical uh, time in the prison. So that is the, my uh, basic um, uh, band, uh, contribution for this time in uh, this Facebook lifetime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, I think uh, the the last uh, the last uh, um, conversation was our the last one. I think we finished two round of circles, and so I think maybe. What we will do is um, just kind of wrap up a little bit our conversation. And um, the other day we, we thought we, we were talking, we said maybe, you know, we can do another time, you know, um, possibility of doing another time, maybe more specifically on pain, uh, physical and emotional pain. So how does the, um, from the Tibetan medical point of view, the spiritual meditation point of view, how we can actually um, prevent a lot of our physical and emotional pain and how we can manage better our pain. And probably we can, um, you know, yeah, so we can learn a lot to kind of handle so not to be affected by, by it. Uh, I know like there are many, many uh, uh, new findings through scientific researches are coming out of, on that and then definitely Tibetan medicine and Tibetan spiritual tradition has so much to offer in that. I think maybe um, we might consider as one time talk on this topic in the next, in the future. So I just want maybe just a, want to, I'm, I'm going to open up this question to all of you and to see how all of you wanted to answer this. And of course that uh, all of your conversation um, about from the Tibetan uh, medical point of view 
and particularly uh, the balance and imbalances of the humorous and five elements and also uh, um, uh, Lars about you know the balancing of mind single pointed focus helping helping our mind so you know generally as i was talking earlier you know the the wind it seems like a, a so so important um discussion that, so even in a in a like in in higher higher teachings like in tantrism like uh, in i know like one of in the burn tradition called maji sanji jusum and this text is talk about nine different winds and 25 different winds and subcategory hundreds and thousands of different kind of winds how these winds circulate through our body our mind every given moment and then some subtler aspect now i know like all of you from talking more point of view particularly dr punsola was talking more point of view about the food and uh, behavior seasons and taste of food and volume of food and so on in in order to balance these element or not but what about um so let me say this we are just maybe trying to keep the question simple so these five principle of five element more grosser level of the season and food and taste to a higher level like a uh, five wind solung chinjulung trusel jilung chapjer jilung nenyam jilung and these higher winds basically more related with the consciousness and more related with specific organs how they flow in the body and so what about these type of winds and then especially what about like a winds what we call yishiji delong lad and so wisdom lung there's some notion of wisdom lung rigbi rang lung yishiji delong chin chin onjen peniji ying lung sad ying lung sad rig lung sad ye lung sad wona that there are many different very very kind of difficult concept of lung but which is not which really seems like a kind of affecting also our body and our mind you know so i always been very curious about does also these are this just i'm going to pour a bunch of questions here and then maybe please feel free to talk anything that you feel comfortable and also idea about in one single day we breathe air 11000 liters of air every day and among them 550 meter of oxygen that we breathe every day in single day every time when we breathe one breath in about 20% we breathe in and about excel 15% and we keep 5% of oxygen in order in our lung through our heart through our circulation of blood to artery to give every part of the body function basically giving food to the all the cells in the body but how does this mind awareness can actually play does any relationship with the oxygen and awareness any relationship these you know the lung lungs that you are talking about oxygen or some or maybe when we talk in a tantra all these different winds maybe it has something go, go even beyond uh, because some in the in the buddhism sometimes teaching talk about you not i think in some sense no humans we need to breathe oxygen not necessarily every sentient being need to breathe oxygen so these are just very open um yeah open questions anybody wanted to say anything about these things just pull, pull your hand and then i'll unmute you okay oh uh, rubichella so uh, do you hear me so uh, i'm yeah. using it. all right so the uh, like you said um the lung has all le- all kinds of levels if you think a little bit bigger level and you can think that's like harrigans and those wind and those cyclones all these things those are the bigger the, the biggest level and then comes to the 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 in a in the medium and which, what we are breathing today is also a lung and then a lung and then if you goes deeper level and then the lung connects you know like body and mind and especially the my, mental activities thoughts and emotions all are deal with dealing with the lung all those lungs are very important once you have lung imbalance in your body and this affects everything and so 
Lung, uh, Lung has like, uh, you know, like, uh, as you mentioned that uh, we have five different categories of Lung in, in terms of Tibetan medicine. And we call the Song Tsingi Lung, it means life sustaining wind that has a direct uh, connection with our life. Whether you have a longer life or shorter life, or whether you have, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the healthier life or, or unhealthy life, it has direct connection with our life. And the life-sustaining wind is the, the, the located in the crown of our head, which we call crown chakra. And then it passes down to the, down to the chest, and then we, it, it also uh, responsible for the, the clearing our mind, uh, clearing our, the five sense organs. And, uh, and if you go a little bit deeper level than that, then the, the life sustaining wind, the Song Zin Gilung, when they, there is a uh, great practitioners, they use those energies to, to, to gain the energies without even the food. They can stay very long, long times, like in, in ancient time in Tibet. There are many yogis, practitioners, they stay in a cave and they, 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 they just take the, those energies from the, uh, the environment. And then some, some, some of those practitioners even can just one spoon of flowers or just one day and then rest of the energies they take from the, the, inner, the wind energies. So those are, and then um, there are also things that practitioners can use those energies to develop their mind, to, to, to gain more in knowledge, to eliminate all the, the what they call the negative <clears throat> inflection emotions and uh, all right, yes. <coughs> So, for example, you know, idea of generally that wind is carrying um, oxygen to through through lung, through heart, to rest of the body to give food to the cell. So, my question here is: Is it possible from our from Tibetan medical point of view or from tantric point of view uh, that wind not only carry like oxygen, but wind can also carry a specific qualities of consciousness, such as love. Can wind can carry, can, this, is, this is a crazy question here. Yeah. Can wind can carry a love in, in, in the wind and bringing into the heart or can, bring, can wind can carry specific qualities for the brain, food for the brain, Food for the heart, food for the kidneys, spleen, liver. Uh, so, what does wind carries? Uh, yes, Rumbuchi, wind carries uh, almost everything. I can say almost everything. We have, as I mentioned, we have life sustaining wind that deals with our mind. And then we have progressive wind that deals with our circulation, mainly located in the, the heart chakra. And it deals with our heart. It also can give benefit to the heart when it's in the state of balance. And then it's also bring all oxygens and the, the, the nutrition to all our body, all over our body. And then we also have another wind called fire accompanying wind which deals with the directly deals with our digestion systems, not only digestion, it also deals with the, the metabolism, right? So uh, then also the, we have another wind that's called descending wind that deals with the fetus, holding the, the fetus up when it comes to the nine month, the push out and pushing the feces out, uh, urination. And then, uh, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like when you have like intercourse, like sexual intercourse and some, some they have problems with the, uh, you know, like uh, the, 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 what they call uh, the, the potency, right? And then that's also many times the, the, because of those, the, the, the descending wind. So wind can do almost everything, the mental activities, and especially wind can, uh, there are a lot of levels that, you know, meditate on the wind energy. Tsa, Lung, Tigli, the channel and the energy and the essence of nutrition. So okay. the great yogis, they use all those three energies to gain the, 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 the development of the, our mind, to, okay. to purify our mind and uh, okay. to attend the enlightenment. So okay. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and Yandela. Okay. So um, Dr. Ondila answered one of my questions already. So basically it will definitely carry the nutrients and um, I think also because the nutrients transmit through the lung, it's a um, connect with the brain and helps to 
release the neurotransmitters. We just don't have any such a research done saying by doing this, then uh, by satisfied loom, then you're releasing such and such a neurotransmitters that we don't know. But definitely there's a connection that I can um, kind of uh, see through the function of the loom. And going back to the uh, talk that you asked me earlier, the so lung and ning lung, I skipped that because that was going to be the more advanced stage at that time. So basically, so lung will be more focused on your mental related um, issues. So all the symptoms we have been talked and um, uh, ning lung will be connected with our cardiovascular health. So Dr. Uh, Undula already made that connection. So nevertheless, how they look very similar in certain way, but they also can be really different, but they share one common uh, sign and symptom on patient is they get a really sensitive on the crown of the head. They feel really sore on the chest, uh, right on the sternum, and also thoracic vertebrae and six, five and six. The reason is those are the hot chakra, uh, or we call uh, so that's the center for that. So when you point those points, when they, unless they have injury from mechanical reason, then if they have a soreness, those are the answers for us to um, conclude their connect. Their condition is connected with the solung and ninglung. So we use what we do is that when we do the either the hormone treatment or when we do the breathing exercise. What's going on really is when you, at that moment, when you're really shocked, so when you're really anxiety, anxious, panic attack, you lock yourself so you're not breathing in. So when you're not breathing, you actually cuts all the oxygen going up and down physiologically, right? But in lung, you're actually closing down the movement of the lung. So when you do uh, a moment, when you start to do the, deep breathing in once after you do three times, like that, three times, once you do that, that it carries the oxygen up and down. So we just use a different language in Western medicine. We say oxygen is moving, but in Tibetan medicine, we're um, letting the lung to move, moving uh, according so, to so, the- So question, for example, if you're breathing in, if you're breathing in, we have like a rhythmic breath. Yes. And usually mm -hmm. most of the time we are trying to breathe through our no nose. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically, it's air containing maybe uh, uh, some percentage of oxygen. So for the Tibetans, so when, once you breathe in this air, which contains some oxygen primarily and maybe other things, but once it gets in, then when it comes to a, where does, where does they become more specifically one of the five lungs? Like for example, where does this, where does this breath, rhythmic breath, or this air boundary where it comes becomes like a solung when it in the in the crown? I mean, in the Tibetan medicine, since in the crown, in some of the Maju Tantra, they talk solung in the heart, but it doesn't matter. So where, when they enter there, they become a solung, sure. or how, how does where does a what is coming from out and where transform something into a solung? Or how does that work? So that someone can answer, maybe Pinto. Maybe uh, Dr. Pinto, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I think is uh, in general when we looking the our body, a uh, mind, and then also the five elements. Uh, I think there is a not only one single. They so like more like a gross, more like a material levels, more subtle levels, and they're also more fine subtle levels. So in our body, uh, like the physical body, uh, so like regenerating is we eating food and then abstracting the nutrients and the, that the nutrient uh, to regenerate our physical body. But also this is not the only way of the getting the essence of the five elements. So the eating food, digesting, abstracted essence is one of the getting five elements. But also the one important is to get the five essence of the five elements through the breathing. 
So when we look in the breathing is the commonly, officially is yes, through the nose and the mouth. But also in the old, our body pores, this also is the, the place where is the breathing to regenerating or the refreshing the body system. So through this, that the uh, special through the inhaling, when we abstracting, when we get all the essence of the five elements, and especially if you do with the conscious, with the sort of specific way, so that the inhaling through the inhale, the five element is not the physical level, is a more sort of like a subtle level. So that will regenerate also more like a subtle level of the five element. So this is a way of the uh, subtle element regenerating through the more breathing, more through the inhaling way. But when we look in this, the, uh, the either we call is the Soglung or the Ninglung. <clears throat> so the Soglung and the Ninglung is the both is taking the place is that the same sort of like region because is that the, as the previous doctor said is that the Sogzin Lung this that the life sustaining we call the, the Sogzin Lung is located in the crown chakra. And then this that the ascending lung is located in the heart chakra. So this is Sogzin Lung is come down to the heart chakra and the heart chakra goes up to goes to the, the crown chakra region ending through the nose area. So this that the, we important as we said this that the, um, the jugular note or the, we call this the the throat chakra is important because intersections. And then the, another one is the heart chakra. It is a very important. Why this is important? Because it's that the lung tipa pegan, like the one of the tipa we call is a determined tipa, tipa dubji, accomplishing tipa is located in the heart chakra. And then this the lung, which call is like the pervading lung, also is located in the heart chakra, like the capji lung. And they also did the supporting peg and peg and tenji also located in this the heart chakra. So for that reason, this is we consider is like a like a central station, sort of like it's very important. So for that reason, either is the Tantrism or the Buddhism or the Tibetan medicine. We consider this heart chakra is very important, as Dr. Yang mentioned before this, that the potency also mainly we using this kind of chakra. So this is also, I think, so like a conclusion of my topic, like the winter comes, everything condensed, is we have tendency more like depressions. A lot of people get like a depression problems. Also in the compare with the summer and the winter, people go to see the healthcare more winter than the summer. Why? Because the, that the wind, because it's sort of like a little, uh, like slow down is not move as like the fast because it's that the nature of the winter. For that reason, as people get more tendency to depression, also this is that the lack of the air. Lazo, to che ani. So thank you, thank you, everybody. So now, um, maybe what I would just say, maybe do the conclusion here, and then. Uh, I think in people who all the English listener who listen in English, then they can, they don't have to be part of it. Then unless they wanted to hear Tibetan, beautiful Tibetan language, which doesn't make any sense, you're welcome to stay. Um, so first of all, I want to really, really appreciate, I know all of you personally, so it was nice to see friends, but doing something hopefully meaningful for everybody who's listening. <laughs> And so uh, I want to thank um, uh, member Kunga Wandula, member Kaza and member Ponso Amula, and the Geshe Lobzan Terengla, and Tama La Tantrash Dele. Thank you so much for um, being here with all your, your precious times to be being, you know, being available and giving some support to, to our cyber community worldwide. And uh, I'm sure they benefit. And I encourage everybody uh, to write down, uh, comment uh, whatever you feel, what, whatever you want to hear next time. 
and whatever are some specific questions that you have to a specific speakers and uh, and i'm i'm requesting them to visit some of these comments and if they have little time they will answer but if they you if they don't if you do not get answer so you can also that breathe it out <laughs> um so so just in terms of scheduling next week um next tuesday um i just did a one facebook yesterday call you know many of you know the pit instruction uh, i've been every now now and then i have been doing this but uh, lately not been very good with traveling but i just managed to do one yesterday and i will do one uh, tomorrow uh, next week on tuesday and i will uh, write the title and timing everything but then i will be traveling again uh, going to brazil and then back to india then i'm not sure how frequently i will able to do it not but i will definitely uh, let everybody know uh, how frequently we were able to do it because we had such a great team with twr facebook live it were really helping a lot so i also wanted to thank twr facebook live and particularly anya who who has been uh, our host and helping uh not this time and every time when we when we did the online thing so i think um did it did marve da ke lius hai is ke lius hai um chik lui de ngada bachya sada har de lui oh no le te de de konga la konga la ke kame de lius wa tane the till mas nas ane kungala ki yeah so then everybody who are listening here not uh, not hearing tibetan so please you uh, you don't have to continue to sit here and uh, so kungala maybe if you wanted to continuously speak a little bit about uh, um yeah so you you want in tibetan so in tibetan so so that all our tibetan audience so basically just summarizing from the beginning to end little introduction little uh, particularly if there's things that they can really ap- apply uh, please uh, welcome the lost room is just the letter for get it and so get you tomia the enangal to send lenge nam ta to she send you ati and then uh tatarin and so delaya uh kasurajiges lugi ne da semgi ne ene lu da semni gin jewe gor ti de gol ya da ya wu shu chun so ani ta da ngan zu gan ma she sha de ma che che da inji ken ye da ting ge da inji ma ken ba so le ya ta ma che an zu che to du shu chun tu na se ne du se ne bu che so xia za ta ri ngan zu de ma da ge she de zo de semgi na ze gor ti she de ge yo re en semgi na za de ya semgi na zu la yin du ta ngan zu ba lu da zao ni ne jao me de ba ting de ji ma yin ba che lu da semni gin jewe yo de ba ho te de ji gwan ne tu sma she bre en tomar de ngan zu ta ji ge sem ge na zu chung a che be ge gyu o ta ji ngan zu ne khan de ji yin be ne su bo le ya chung a ge gyu ta ane de gyu de ya ji ge je bu chi bar che ba la gen ji gu gu yo re gen de re ane gen de ne ane gyu de la gen de che ne je bu khan de ji jing ge yo me ta de de gwor ji ta ni tu sma ne che bre en cha ta ho yu so ri be na le ya ta ji ngan zu sem ge na za se ya de le ya ta ji gyu zo de ngan zu marik pa de she de ge yo re marik pa de ya ta de ko na ni le mong de marik pa ta an dang ji marik pa se ya wa ni she de de na ne ta marik pa de la de ne ngan zu ji thu nga se ya ta thu sum se ya ta de ja she dan ti mu se ya de de ya de ja she dan ti mu nga ge cha do se ya ge thu nga se de de ji she de ko ta de ye ta kan da sem ge na zu chung ar che be ge gyu zo de ge de ge yin de ba de nga ran zu ji ge wa thong ma chi ba ne ta kan da ko an de ne ma che ge ba do an ne ngan zu le ya de ဆင်ကင်နာဇတီချင်းဝရှိပဲကြီးတိကဲငါဆိုညမ်တို့ရွယ်တယ်ပါအပင်နဲ့ဆော်ရီပဲနာလေးအောင်ဆိုစိတ
ตางอารันซอยาจีคาซูรจีอ่าตะสิบะคอลดีนาเลเกซาเบชินเจงอันซอยามดูอันนี้เอ่อจีนตัวจาตะชะตันติมงาเจทาโตติเกกันยามดู
tangyum ke tone yaga ta duga ta khongru se dang ajelo soba khaya ma chobe ta tangyum ke tone drag hai batela nyen debi na khana ke sem nal ya khongru ta se dang ajel sem chuya ke yu chage ma res drag hai bat ko drajila cha sha ne dilia ani ta yak shu chung bi ne music se la cha sha ti de chen che bi na ani sem ke nal khongru ga ke se dang din de ma ki ala khan dar ya thon da do do di chiru ge ta khan da ne ju khan de ju chung bi ne zo di so zo nang ke sem de la ra le de so zo nang ke sem ke nam do de phi duga ta yaga se ye wa che Digi, Rana Dunga take you, but this soon so on, did it all the Gamlena. What did it was it ring unto this and the Matang make Sunga? So was it in the shoes, so stung it in Matang make it in my tissue, say you. Lazo, the check, got in cheer. Lazo, ne, um, the Lawandula, pet to his chair, Halle Legge, pet, I wish you so so pet. Some man in the Dodo to the Silver Malaba pet, I wish you so on, so pet in cheer. Ane tanto de la Nanjo Tinala Tanda Ngode Tedon Gergi Ngode Tedon in Alla Pavan again, Kazi, Menga Haku, Mekasi, Yenge, Yobi Hina, Ane Tanda Pogetti, Pogetti, Jabiton, Tinegi Pento, the Wooden Dudu, Yungudona, Ane Tizzi Pento, Dus, Tinet in the Chen, Labja in a re, Lobdona in a re, Samsuna in a re, Narunas. Yeah, dam dam ngodu tinde ngodep kol lega do tinde chedu kala kha kha ga ni ane kha kha ga ma tyeon do na digi de digi de de ine tan peng yo na um dig peng do ji sung ba na ngonju la ine sim shu pare ji de ta peng min do na mi se ki peng min do ma sung na digi de ane jam de ke do na digi de la so ane tu ji se kadin che sang ma ane ane che na ma sang ma Chita Tangbuna la Kumbiana on the Misegi Tangbuna la Ojo Tanda Karsore, me sug rang call a pain rang called a chick chetuna yabu then was a girl to devash you show. Lasso cause it did not a penny and it land a jabu duna and a china land jamatubna in a coronado comment on the signa teacher yabu jet into Lasso cause it and Lasso 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 Lasso